In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix your grandma's side tables that you decided to never use coasters on as a child. Allow me to help you resolve your guilt by giving you some tips on how to make it better. We begin our journey with two side tables. These are one of the more challenging projects that I've taken on, and the reality is that they don't look like they would be a lot of work. I could show you the before and after, and you wouldn't even guess the horrors that await me for this project. In some ways, I made it harder on myself, but I'll talk about the different ways you could go about making these repairs. To start, these side tables were painted in a gray chalk paint and distressed. The original owner was selling them since they didn't fit her decor in her new home. Before I remove the paint, I want to address the lifting veneer. I don't want to use paint stripper and further contaminate the particle board under the veneer. I don't want to scrape it because the surface is uneven. I don't want to possibly gouge the veneer, so we're going to make the repair before removing the finish. To make this repair, I'm going to use a combination of chisels and a small spatula to pry the veneer away from the particle board as delicately as possible. You can see the lifted area that is damaged existed before the side table was painted and was subsequently painted over. It was a very tedious process, prying away the veneer, removing some of the particle board, and then pressing it back down to see if what I removed had been enough. The wide, flat chisel was really good for skimming the surface between the veneer, and I used the spatula to help prop the veneer away so that I didn't accidentally gouge it. As I moved further inward, under the veneer, a large portion of the corner required the particle board to be removed. What most likely happened was that area was exposed to long-term water damage, which went through the veneer, causing the particle board to swell underneath. Once I was happy with the flushness of the veneer, I filled the substrate with an ample amount of wood glue and then I used a small scrap piece of plywood to compress the veneer down. After 24 hours, I removed the board from the top and was ready to begin paint removal. I started with the other side table that didn't have the bubbling up veneer and used my scraper to figure out what had been done to the piece. It looks like they may have scuff sanded as the original finish was still present. And after scraping a large section, I realized the paint had gone into the wood grain. So I switched over to using paint stripper. I wanted to use up some of this stripper that I've had on hand. I've been using Stripwell's QCS Vintage Finish Remover, but I have a lot of this Clean Strip Premium Stripper on hand. It wasn't cheap, so I want to try to use it up. I applied it using a chip brush on the tops of the side tables and the drawers. 
When I was prepping the drawers for paint stripper, I noticed some swirl marks where the distressing was. I would assume based on the swirl marks that the distressing was done with a power sander. The good news was that it didn't appear to have gone through the veneer. When I was removing the paint from the tops of the side tables, the side table that I just repaired the lifted veneer on had a five inch sanding disc burn through the veneer on the opposite corner that I just made the repair. My assumption is that the veneer had lifted in that spot as well, and to fix it, it was just sanded down. I'm going to be honest, I was not happy to find this under the paint it means even more work and time. I do always try to look at these problems with different approaches and assess which one is going to work better for me. There are a few things I can think to tackle this. One would be just to replace the top. The sides are solid walnut, so I don't really want to do that. Another option would be to pry off the walnut sides and then smooth the top out attach veneer and then reattach the sides. This is a difficult one because I don't know how the trim is actually attached. And to be fair, I did attempt to remove the trim, but it was definitely not coming off. I could also try to remove the veneer, but the task of getting the substrate even is a challenge in and of itself. And one of the final things I can think of is to carefully sand down the veneer and not the sides, which again is not ideal in getting a smooth substrate. Ultimately, I went with the decision to remove the veneer from the inside of the trim and try to get the surface as level as possible. In retrospect, I wish I had the wood on hand to just replace the top because this was rather difficult. I used my chisel to create a gap between the solid walnut trim and the veneer top. I then wedged the chisel under the veneer and began removing it from the substrate. Any of the larger pieces that I was able to remove, I ended up saving. Aged walnut veneer is good for patching, so this may come in handy for something else. I worked from the bottom right corner to the top left corner to remove the veneer, being careful not to gouge the solid walnut trim. I had to remove additional layers where the burn through was as this surface was a bit more proud than the rest. Wood filler was applied to the surface to help level it out and get everything smooth. After I sanded the surface down, I ended up sealing where the veneer was removed with polyurethane. I'm going to need to cut a replacement piece of veneer, which I have a scrap piece on hand from another project. To get the right size, I used some cardstock and placed it where the veneer would fit, and I taped the pieces together to form a larger template. I'm sure this could be done with a large piece of paper and a blade as well. Once my template was together, I used some spray adhesive on the back of it. I waited until it was tacky, but not going to permanently adhere to the veneer, and I placed the template onto the veneer. With the veneer being paperbacked, I was able to rough cut it using scissors. I did trim it up a bit with a blade after the initial form was made. 
Now, normally when I attach veneer to a substrate, I use contact cement. For this application, I'm going to use wood glue because I need some working time to get the veneer sheet in place. I don't really have as much luxury of trimming the sides easily in this scenario. Once the veneer was down, I pressed it with my hands first and then I used a roller. I want to keep it compressed while it dries, so I applied a board to the area which is clamped and weighted down. Since the tabletop was drying, I moved on to removing the paint from the rest of the side tables, and I ended up switching back to Stripwell's QCS stripper after having issues getting the paint to come out of the wood grain on the tops. This worked much better in comparison, and I even applied another round to the tops just to get the rest of the paint out. Next, we need to address the gouge in the front of the side table. I repaired this using a mix of quick wood with some good filla walnut wood filler as an experiment to tint the wood filler. This worked really well, but it did take longer to dry and the color wasn't an exact match. I waited 24 hours before removing the weight and the board from the tabletop, and I had a few areas where it didn't fully adhere to the sides. I went around with my chisel to clean and trim these areas up. I then used some CA glue to attach the areas to the surface that weren't fully adhered. I did have some areas where there were very minor gaps, which I filled using a mixture of good filla walnut wood filler and red oak. I'll link these in the description if you're interested. The other side table, once the paint and finish was removed, had some pretty bad water spots on it. I mixed together some water and oxalic acid, and I applied two coats to help remove the water stains. Next, I sanded everything down using 150 grit sandpaper and then went to 180 grit sandpaper. These tables were sanded mostly by hand due to the sides and the rounded legs. While I was sanding the drawers down, I actually discovered that the back of it had a very large crack across it, and I just filled this with wood glue using a syringe, and I clamped it down to dry. When I started this project, I was hoping I wouldn't have to stain it, but with the new veneer top and other issues, I decided to stain the side tables with General Finishes Antique Walnut Gel Stain. I applied it using a foam brush so that I could get into the angles and corners a lot easier. I had some issues with stain streaking a bit when I was trying to wipe it off, but this was due to the high temperature in the garage. If you experience these type of issues, just use some mineral spirits on a shop cloth and wipe the surface down and it'll remove that remaining gel stain. I did a second coat of General Finishes Candlelight Gel Stain on the newly veneered top using the same method after the walnut stain had enough time to dry. It helped to make it a bit more of an orange tone, but it was still quite a bit more brown than the other table. To seal the pieces, I grabbed some semi-gloss lacquer. I applied one coat initially so that I could get a better view of what the final colors looked like. I decided to then apply a medium walnut toner on the pieces to make the colors closer. Unfortunately, this is the only toner that I currently have on hand, but it did pull the colors closer together. After the toner was applied, I did three more coats of lacquer to seal the piece. The handles were rather grimy, but they were solid brass, so I just used some barkeeper's friend to clean them up and bring back their shine. I grabbed some 800 grit sandpaper to remove any particles that landed in the finish while it was drying. And then I used Howard's Feed and Wax to hydrate the raw wood surfaces and polish the lacquered areas.
someday the winds will change. As everything fades, you'll say it was made to be this way. When a shift in momentum captures us all in the wave, it will carry us on to the next phase. Leaving behind all the turmoil, the chaos, and the strife, pushing us forward into a new life. If you enjoyed this transformation, be sure to subscribe and boop the like button for more. Thanks for watching.